Hi Pisces Risings. <sighs> I am so sorry that I've gypped you the last two months. You guys are coming first this month and I know that the setting looks a little bit different. I'm a manifesting generator in human design and I'm actually working on creating a teaching right now for human design. Therefore, I'm trying to put the practice of my own design into the works and typically I would film these videos after getting done up and doing my hair, doing my makeup and like trying to knock them out one by one in my office um, and a lot of the times that looks like me forcing when the vibe isn't there me to get them done in order to just get them done on time and oftentimes that leads to me like stuttering or me forgetting like certain details that I wanted to include in the reading or them becoming super late because I just have to prioritize other things going on. So not only did I want to make sure that you guys were first because I've missed you guys the last two times since you're at the end of the zodiac, I wanted to go backwards this month, but also because I just wrote the horoscopes, I'm inspired, I'm ready to talk about it, and I would rather do it now than by the time I do my hair, makeup, drive to my office, get to my office, like in another hour and a half, if the mood's not there, then the video's not going to be good, it's not going to be good quality, and I want to make sure that you guys are getting the information that you need, of course. So as always, please make sure that Pisces is your rising sign, okay? That's how you're going to make sure that this is the most accurate reading for yourself. If you would like to book a personal reading, you can go to kmoney.biz. Everything that you need is going to be linked in the description below. All of my other socials will be linked. Um, I always say that the monthly collective readings will pretty much be pretty helpful in terms of like what themes in your life you can expect to be illuminated or more prominent front and center stage, if you will. But it's not an alternative or supplementary to finding out what's going to happen to you as an individual. That I would recommend a personal reading for because it's just going to vary based off of your personal configurations. So let's just jump right into this. I'm sorry, I had to prop you up on another pillow. I'm dead at this angle in this setup right now, but it was hurting my neck. Okay, on the first, Mercury is going to station retrograde in your second house and it will station direct on the 25th. So it's going to station direct back at 15 degrees. So this is just something to pay attention to. If you have planets that happen to be around that degree, you're probably going to be feeling that the most. Mercury retrograde isn't the worst thing in the world, okay? It's really not. It's speaking, talking, writing, using your voice communication. You guys know the jig when it comes to me explaining Mercury. It's all forms of getting from point A to point B. It's how you communicate. It's the text you send. It's also in a retrograde period where there's a little bit of wonkiness. It's like sending the screenshot of a conversation to the wrong person. It's like paying for something three times by accident. It's like, um, you know, you're telling yourself you're going to put gas in the car in the morning so you need to get up a little bit earlier and then you get up and you don't get up early and you're like, oh my god, I literally said I was going to put gas in the car this morning and now you're late to work. Like those sort of things. Having this in your second house though is probably going to affect a little bit more of your finances. So this is your money, your self-worth, your investments, your possessions, things that you're like probably spending a lot of money on. It's bills. It's like even your dietary changes, something with food, getting your basic needs met, your access to basic resources. Maybe you're switching up your diet. What is coming in versus what is coming out both with your body and with your finances so in the same way that banking is like you know money coming in money coming out it's also because it's food and like nurturing the actual physical body it's what's coming in versus what's coming out or not coming out so that's something to pay attention to as well um, when it comes to like needing to sign permanent contracts needing to make life altering commitments right now if you can put them off put them off it's a good time to kind of recalibrate revisit the drawing board um not second guess yourself but like just double check and triple check before committing to something and if you do like not have an option at all and you have to commit to something right now just make sure it's not an impulsive commitment it's not something that you came up with yesterday and you're committing to it today it's something that you've thoroughly looked through understood talked about all of those things but typically finances money budgeting income can be up for debate it can be up for reconsideration expect some setbacks hindrances or obstacles in this area but it won't be the end of the world on the third venus is going to conjoin neptune in your first house so venus and neptune are both very lovey-dovey when they come together in the sky it's very um you know ethereal it's very romantic it's very beautiful it's very um even like artistic and spiritual but it's very delusional and it's very deceptive and it's very confused because it's seeing things through rose-colored lenses. It's the, seeing things through the vessel of romanticism. It's seeing things through, um, you know... This con 
this conflated vision because you want something to be really good, but maybe it's not in reality. It's the deception and the confusion between like what's real and what's not, what's real and what's fantasy, what is tangible versus what you're coming up with in your head. So Venus and Neptune, just be careful. Tread lightly when it comes to like, uh, you know, having some tricks played on you. This is where you can fall for someone who's super, you know, attractive. And then you're like, oh my God, this person's the worst person ever, but I'm just going to let it slide because they're hot. Don't do that. It can also be that you end up paying a lot of money for like a nice shiny object just to find out that that worth, that, uh, you know, percent that you paid for it is like far over what the thing is actually worth. It makes me think of just snake oil. It's like, you know, someone's selling jewels and they're like, these are these rare jewels you cannot find anywhere else. They come from this cave in the middle of X, Y, and Z. And then you find out it's like an Amazon amethyst crystal. Like that's the sort of vibe that we see with this. So just be careful with, again, things like big purchases. Because it's happening in your first house though, this is self-identity, who you are, what you look like. Maybe you're having a glow up, girl. Maybe you're just like looking a lot better. Maybe you're switching up your aesthetic or your beauty or your wardrobe or something like that. Um, when it comes to this being you, I would say the best way you can take advantage of this is by if there's anything that you are looking to launch or to post online to go viral or to make a lot of sales, something that is going to give you the energy. I wouldn't say sell snake oil, that's not my advice here, but like you can be the one that's casting the spell on people. For better or for worse, I would, you know, be a good person with this. I'm not telling you to do anything bad, but it's a really good time because the thing is, Venus is beauty and finances and aesthetics, pleasure things that are attractive, Neptune goes far and wide. So it's like, this would be a really good time to like, if you have a small business coming up and you're like, oh, I should really be on social media, I should really be on TikTok trying to get sales, great time to come up with that little creative concept, put it online and watch it sort of spread like wildfire. That's basically what Neptune can do. So I would really take advantage of that, but just be careful, especially in relationships, whether they be business partnerships, romantic relationships, whatever, to not be um, drinking the Kool-Aid, especially when you don't know what's in it. On the fifth, the sun is going to conjoin Neptune and Pisces again in your first house. So this can probably be a continuum of the story that we're talking about here that began on the third with Venus conjunct Neptune. The sun is a little bit more having to do with like our ego and our authority figures and our bosses, our fathers, it's masculine energy, it's people that are in charge of us, it's like making decisions from a place of independence and ego. So you want to make sure again that you're not like falling for something or trying to make somebody fall for something that you're offering through the lens of ego just to like boost your confidence or how you feel about yourself or even to like accidentally misinterpret that someone is more of an authority figure or more important than they actually are. On the 6th, there's going to be a solar eclipse in, at 19 degrees in Aries in your second house. So really big for finances. This is really good for like a major new beginning happening in your financial sector. Maybe that retrograde considering we're having the retrograde during the solar eclipse, it was only a few days prior, but because it began already by the time that the eclipse ensues, maybe any reconsideration, again, revisiting the drawing board, kind of juggling things in terms of like, am I budgeting? Should I spend on this? Should I invest in this house? Should I take out a mortgage? Should I, you know, start this new business idea that's going to bring in income? Should I change this diet plan? Anything like that. I think the major new beginning with it kind of kicking off on the 6th and unraveling throughout this uh, Mercury retrograde cycle, again, there might not be like a very concrete decision or change happening like legitimately on the day of the 6th, but rather that th this is the area where things are changing for you. There's some big changes happening here. Um, with it being a, because you just, that means that you just had the lunar eclipse in Libra in your eighth house at the end of March. So there was probably an ending to something you shared with somebody else, whether that be secrets, intimacy, money, assets. And now having this major new beginning in your first house, it's like you might be having what is less dependence on other people or on other things external to you. And now you're learning how to build that growth on your own, within yourself, create that stability, that accessibility, that wealth, that foundation on your own, standing on your own two feet. The sun is also going to be conjunct Chiron in your second house on that day as well. So this can actually bring attention to some wounds or some unresolved emotions or attention to things that sting a little bit. However, it can also illuminate them so much so to the point where now you're given an opportunity to heal them. On the 10th, Mars is going to conjoin Saturn and Pisces in your first house. This can be a really frustrating energy because we're dealing with Mars that wants to go, 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 and Saturn 
pattern that wants to stop, stop, stop. So to put those two things together, I always say it's like stepping on the gas and the brakes at the same time. Mars is very independent. It's aggressive. It's assertive. It wants to go after what it wants. It has a lot of energy. It has this rolling ball of fire and momentum after it to kind of pursue things regardless of if there's any obstacles. It will relentlessly go after what it wants, so much so to the point where it can rush and like create a mess and knock things over it can also be wherever it's transiting in our chart where we're having a lot of changes and catalytic action but also having frustrations and obstacles and really having a lot of friction basically saturn wherever it's transiting is typically asking us to be a little bit more responsible a little bit more disciplined a little bit more adult doing the things that we know we're supposed to do even if we don't want to do them so with mars going after what it wants regardless and saturn following the rules even if that means it's revoking you of instant gratification Having those two things come together can be very frustrating. It can be that you want to go, go, go in something or someone, whether that be a person or a circumstance or a rule or whatever, um, you know, is stopping you, is it's what you believe to be stopping you or getting in the way or creating what is like a big block for you to go after this thing. Um, the other way around, though, can be that you're not ready to move on. You're not ready to take the next step. You are kind of sedentary. And Mars is saying like, no, we have to go. You have to get past this. Like you have to build that momentum. So it's going to manifest differently for everybody. Having this in your first house again has a lot to do with self, identity, you as a person, who you are, what you look like. Maybe I, there's definitely a lot of character development happening. I would say that having Saturn go through Pisces, that's a three-year transit that's really hunkering down on you you as a person it can strip you of a lot of ways that you're self-sabotaging ways that you are stunting your own personal development ways that you have just needed to shed for some time that's probably long overdue and maybe mars is the planet that's coming in to sweep through this area of your chart through you your identity to kind of like burn off the edges that can no longer come with you does that make sense Mars is very fiery, so I'm like, this is kind of, it's almost like removing the weight without your permission in a way that might be really uncomfortable and frustrating now, but is probably in your best interest. It's just that it's not always the most seamless transition. You can expect some frustration. You can expect some when push comes to shove. You can expect some general discomfort. And feeling probably around the middle of the month, what is like, why is this happening? Or like, this is just so annoying. It's temporary. You will get through it, I promise. On the 11th, the sun is going to conjoin Mercury retrograde in Aries in your second house. This is at 22 degrees. So if you're anywhere around there, have any placements around there, that's going to be relevant to you as well. The sun conjoining Mercury retrograde again. So maybe this is like someone or something coming in to tell you yes or no, and that might be the thing that's susceptible to changing because the uh, Mars-Saturn conjunction is happening in your first house of self, you, but the Mercury retrograde is happening in your second house of what you have or what is available to you, what you can use. So maybe that little short stop might be because you think you do or don't have something enough of something like being satiated having a roof over your head having dinner on the table having a uh, sufficient amount of income having security whether that be emotional or financial security and the sun conjunct mercury retrograde might be the day where someone or something might come in to communicate something that later changes for better or for worse on the 15th mercury retrograde is going to conjoin chiron so again this is communication with mercury but because it's retrograde susceptible to change it also brings things back from the past it also again isn't just here to complicate things it's not just here to like be annoying it's here to bring details up for discussion up for debate because there's something you need to figure out first before you can move forward um a lot of the times we just want linear progress. We just want to get from point A to point B. And Mercury typically does that when it's direct. In the retrograde cycle, it's saying like, chill out, we're still going to get to point B. But there's you've dropped so many things on the way. You made the wrong turn. Everything's slow. There's traffic over here. Like we can't rush through traffic anyways. So while we have the time here, let's figure out the confusing details. That way, once the traffic's moving again, we have a more smooth route. We have a more smooth journey moving forward. So any frustrations that are coming up, I invite you to really 
be open-minded to what they're trying to show you or to teach you um, again having this in the second house again with Chiron too wounds and sensitivities around confidence around self-worth around money around accessibility around your body around um, having enough having enough having enough whatever that means to you having or being enough and that looks like it might come up to conversation that day as well on the 17th venus is going to conjoin the north node in aries so this is really good too for like faded faded senses of ease and pleasure it's also a romantic sort of faded vibe um finances can be very present here as well venus is love money beauty pleasure aesthetics the cozy warm feeling that we always talk about it's things generally being good and enjoyable so having that in a conjunction to the north node which is like faded things happening it's being rerouted while it can be quite ominous because sometimes we don't understand why certain things are happening it usually makes sense later but venus being a benefic that wants to help us this can look like a serendipitous moment where things accidentally fall into place for you rather than against you it can be very favorable on the 19th the sun enters your third house in taurus so wherever the sun's transiting is going to bring like a sense of spotlight and illumination to this area so you've been through this a million times the sun is just through month to month it's going through every new sign having it go through the third house can bring a little bit more attention to Things like, yes, speaking, talking, writing, because the third house is communication as well. It's also siblings, transportation, short trips, your car, um, any modality of transportation. It can be traveling. It can be writing. It can be using your voice. It can be um, the, the content that you both create and consume. I always say this is the podcast you listen to, the books that you read, the things you say in the group chat. Um it's really all the people, places, and things and environments that are familiar to you in your everyday life. So having the sun go through here, you might be learning something new. You might be cracking open a new book. You might be learning a new skill. You might be being a little bit more chatty or you might be discussing more ideas. You might be connecting with people um, in the neighborhood or people that can help you, like, for example, with the money stuff, like people that can aid you or provide you information in this way. Um, it can be that you're just saying yes to more plans. It can be that you're like getting your voice out there more. Um, um, on that same day, Mercury retrograde is going to be conjunct Venus. So again, it looks like there's things around conversations, connecting the dots, making decisions or pieces of information now being in a conjunction. So being intensified by Venus, which is again, love, money, beauty, pleasure, finances in your second house. So maybe you're speaking to the right person at the right time. Maybe someone's helping you out. Maybe there's like just this um, energy of you being able to bounce off of somebody else like using somebody else as a soundboard to come to a conclusion where you get more of something for yourself it's like you're getting more ideas that can that you can monetize you're having more conversations with people that can help you with money you are even just like having a lot of ideas and inspiration that can help you feel more secure all of those things can be very present here on the 21st Jupiter is going to conjoin Uranus in your Taurus third house. This is a big day, the 21st, for everybody across the board. Jupiter is conjunct Uranus in your third house. Venus is conjunct Chiron in your second house. And the Sun in your fifth house is squaring Pluto in your twelfth. There's a lot going on this day. So this is a big day that a lot of astrologers have been excited about for quite some time because Jupiter is growth. It's expansion. It's good luck. It's good fortune. It's making a wish and it coming true it's learning from experience it's traveling it's getting outside your comfort zone it's pushing beyond your typical parameters it's going far and wide with something jupiter is a controversial planet because while it does sort of represent what is like oh massive wealth and like incredible fortune on a surface level i have personally seen it in other people's charts really blow things out of proportion and kind of conflate a situation for better or for worse uranus being shock factor and things coming out of left field and like unexpected circumstances or events ensuing again for better or for worse anything from getting in a car accident to winning the lottery having that kind of come into play with a planet that tends to inflate everything that it touches it expands things and make them makes them bigger picture like um blowing helium into a balloon now with all the, also this very erratic unpredictable shaking the table maybe non-conforming even rebellious energy this is in your third house <laughs> something you say might go nuts something you post might go viral something you decide to do might 
completely change your circumstances. A conversation you have might make all of the dots connect. There's something here that is unexpected. With the third house being short-term travel, but Jupiter itself being traveling, maybe you're going on a trip or a vacation or a spring break that is like going to be very unexpectedly, maybe even fatedly good. I know that's vague, whatever that means, whether it's meeting someone there, getting an opportunity, deciding, oh my God, this is where I belong, I'm going to move here. And if you're like, girl, I'm at work, like I am not on vacation, this can be a piece of information that you obtain. It can be a decision you decide to make. It can be, it can mean like you, for example, because the third house is like the things that are most familiar to you, you might take like a different route to work that day or you might go to a coffee shop you've been wanting to try for months now and you just never bit the bullet and now you're going there today something about that change that that break in the chain uranus the shaking of the table of your usual approach might be unexpectedly very favorable for you is what i'm trying to say here if you get invited to go anywhere or to do something even if it's outside of your usual realm or taste or preference say yes because it might end up being the best thing for you you might even like make a new friend. You might have some like really good thing happen online, whatever that may mean. With Venus conjunct Chiron in your second house of finances, again, Chiron being so sensitive around, again, in the second house, self-worth and finances, having Venus brush into that, having Venus grace, what is that like ouchie, is putting, it's soothing the wound. It's putting a band-aid on it. It's making it feel a little bit better. It's making something that was once so painful or stressful or humiliating whatever you know bad emotion you associate with this easier feel better feel more favorable something that maybe once used to hurt really bad you're like wow it does not sting anymore and whether that is more esoteric and spiritual for you maybe with your self-worth or more practical and realistic in terms of like what's in your bank account something's twisting in a better way for you and you just had a solar eclipse here so you just had a major new beginning in this area as well and that new beginning was at the what the 6th the 6th or the 8th of april having that um now like two weeks later three weeks later into the 21st you probably already knew what that eclipse was at that point and this can be like the seeds being planted things growing you being like oh my god things are actually working out here so again it's gonna manifest differently for everybody on the same day again the sun in your fifth house though is square pluto in your 12th which makes no sense wait you're a pisces rising so pluto is going to be in your 11th house currently and the sun is going to be okay so this is going to actually be between your 11th house and your third house so the 12th house and the third house hmm the 12th house and the third house 12th house again is traveling third house we've been dealing with already with communication attention to detail traveling is it traveling it's either something it's either something up here traveling or in real life traveling and what i mean by that is like if you're not literally going somewhere you might be going somewhere new in here whether that means a crack in your perspective you're suddenly seeing things in a totally new way again maybe based off of like newfound information that you came across or a conversation that was really enlightening with somebody else whether it's manifesting something into real life something that started in here is now materializing in the physical realm because the 12th house is unseen it's mystical it's things that aren't tangible you can't look at it and hold it in your hand the third house is absolutely things you can look at and hold in your hand so the third house, I mean, the 12th house being like dreams, your intuition, your psyche, mental health, traveling, addictions, escapism, imagination, even like illness, unanswered questions, unresolved emotions, needing to let go, needing to, to take the weight off, the weight of your brain and the weight of your heart and let things that are weighing on them too heavily go, letting things go. And then the third house being your everyday thoughts, your everyday routines, your same old, same old, where it's like there's certain things that have become so involuntary that it is just a part of you, it is a part of your identity. Having a square between the two, there's something changing here. There's something very major changing 
either internal internally first and it's changing your environment or your environment's changing and now it's making you feel and think differently in like a very profound transformative way i know it's very vague guys i wish i could make it a little bit more concrete let me know of course what you guys are going through though because that's always what helps me form a better perspective to be like huh this is what's going on with pisces risings guys i literally look like a cave woman i what guys when i have a bob i literally look like the kid from the jungle book like it's insane on the 23rd there's going to be a full moon in scorpio in your ninth house at four degrees so this is a major ending full moons in scorpio are like endings endings it's like ending squared because scorpio itself is transmutation it's transformation it's letting go of something in order to make room for the new it's taking something in one form and like transferring it into something else that's transmutation as well taking like pain and turning it into power taking victimhood and turning it into victory it's very profound it's water energy so you're familiar with this because you're a water rising sign it can be quite emotional but it can equally be very cathartic um this is going to be an ending to something that began probably last fall in like november um because that's a six month cycle and having a full moon in your ninth house can be the ending to something again traveling it's traveling faith philosophy philosophy, education, spirituality, religion. If you've been, I'm thinking too, because now that Pluto has been hanging out in your 12th house for quite some time, it entered here for a little bit um, around the same time last year, like spring of 2023. And now we're here in familiar territory again, having that square between your third house of your thoughts, your routines, your habits, coming into that square with Pluto in your 12th house. I'm wondering if it's more of a spiritual thing. Like I said, if you're not like literally changing your environment and moving and going to a foreign country or backpacking through Europe and changing your perspective of your culture, your language, whatever it is, it might be more spiritual. Maybe you're just undergoing a spiritual awakening, especially with Saturn going through the first house. Again, that discipline of self, it can bring you to your knees in order to re-empower you again and saturn and pisces in general is a lot of emphasis on like spiritual cleansing and like forgetting the truth and then coming back home to the truth again so maybe having the full moon here isn't necessarily an ending but like a full circle moment a tying up of loose ends a seeing the bigger picture of something you didn't fully quite understand six months ago becoming a lot more clear and at four degrees it actually might have something to do with moving or home family uh, motherhood children pregnancy nurturance again financial security in terms of the home um which is probably prominent for you again because of all your second house transits but the four or the number four so the um full moon happening at four degrees is that sort of cancerian influence on the 25th, Mercury is going to station direct, so any confusion that you've been having with the Mercury retrograde is probably going to start to clear up a little bit. Any sort of fog that was in the way or even any things that became a lot more clear during that retrograde are going to sort of solidify now and become a little bit more concrete as you navigate forward. And this is again happening in your second house of money, wealth, assets, investments, self-worth, possessions, things like that. On the 29th, Venus is going to enter your Taurus third house. So we just had the sun enter here um, a little bit more towards the first half of the month on the, let's see, on the 19th actually. So having Venus enter the equation of the third house becoming more prominent for you for you now transit wise oh my god i can't speak um venus is again love grace pleasure money finances having it go through the third house is going to warm up cozy up like lube up this area of the chart so this can again look like saying yes to plans more often having a growing audience online from the content that you're posting having a lot more ease and creativity with your writing projects or your ideas or the concepts that you're thinking about in your head it can look like you making purchases that make your everyday life habits and environment a little bit more special like upgrading your car or renovating your office or um just like you know buying yourself nice workout clothes things like that things that spruce up the things that are a little bit more maybe mundane in your everyday life and making them a little bit cuter or nicer it can look like your social life expanding as well and becoming just a little bit more fun on the same day mars is going to conjoin neptune in your first house so again this is something just to be weary for it can be a little bit of smoke and mirrors because again mars wants to make decisions and take action and go 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 neptune really blurs our vision we're not seeing the bigger picture we're not seeing things entirely too clear right now so if you feel like you're under pressure to rush and make a decision now 
know that what's meant for you will never be rushed. It will always be right on time, even if you feel like you're late or you're a late bloomer or something like that, because the illusion itself might be that you don't have enough time or that you need to rush or that you're behind or you need to compete or you need to win. And I think Mars is influenced, like really trying to push through here and Neptune really clouding the vision can create a lot of hesitancy. One, it can create a lot of beating around the bush and being one foot in, one foot out being indecisive, being hesitant, being like, do I stop? Do I go? Do I stop? Do I go? Um, let things fall into place naturally. If something is meant for you, you do not need to force it. And if you force something that's not meant for you, you'll probably face the discomfort in that as well. So you should just try to fall into the natural rhythm of things. Um, don't make any impulsive decisions on this day because again, like if you're making a, an emotional decision or an impulsive decision, you're probably making that decision under the guise of something that like isn't entirely true or real. And then we end the month on the 30th with Mars can I speak with Mars entering your second house of income? So again, wherever Mars is transiting is bringing a lot of change, bringing that catalytic action. It's bringing some, some inspo, some motivation, some hustle to that area of the chart. Having it go through your second house again can look like a lot of financial changes. So maybe there is a speeding up energy in a positive way, growing your finances, things becoming things coming in a lot quicker for you. It can also be frustrations though, and it can be competition, and it can be annoyances, and it can be just general like, oh, when it comes to those things as well. So I would just recommend it treading lightly. Um, if you're feeling the motivation aspect, go after something. If you're feeling the frustration, try to ask yourself what it's trying to teach you and what's coming about from it. Um, I think generally for the month, since pretty much everything is going through, really your second house is being emphasized, your third house, and then everything that's going on up here, your mind is really powerful this month. Use that to your advantage. Really listen to your thoughts. Listen to the stories that you're telling yourself. If you're in a dark spot right now, you're going through it, you're in a rough patch and you're telling yourself like, you're such an idiot, you need to try harder, like you're not worth this, of course things never go your way, everybody's using you, no one cares about you, no one helps you, this isn't going to work out, you are you can't be surprised when the world hates you because you're reflecting that about what you are not happy with with yourself. If you're having a hard time and you have to fake it till you make it and you're like, I had the worst day ever but things are working in my favor. I guarantee things will go a little bit lighter on you. You just got to roll with the punches this month. Um, don't force anything. That's my biggest advice. And with the eclipse, I always just recommend you got to let it take you where it's taking you. I wouldn't force anything. I wouldn't be too picky or choosy about what you get out of the eclipse sort of like quarter machine. Because even if it doesn't make sense and you're looking at it and you're like, this is what I got from the eclipse. It, there's still a lot of more time to go. Usually eclipses take about six months to culminate anyway. So while things might be a little wonky right now and you're like feeling like you're stuck in the riptide and being pulled in a million different directions, by the end of the month, things will start to ease up and calm down post-eclipse, post, you know, Mercury stationing direct, etc. Okay, I hope this helped you guys. Thanks for being patient with me and thank you for dealing with my little set up today. I hope this helped you guys. Again, if you want to book a personal reading, kmoney.biz. Everything you need will be down below. Please subscribe. Please like. Love you. And I'll talk to you soon.